The world is in lockdown. Here are seven things that you and I can do as Amazon sellers right now during this quarantine. What's up guys, welcome to the video. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name is Miles, I'm a multiple seven figure seller. I've sold like 5 million bucks now on Amazon in the last couple of years. And this channel right here is all about me teaching you how to accelerate your own Amazon FBA journey. So we all know that what is sweeping the world right now is potentially unprecedented in modern history in terms of its magnitude, the scale of the consequences and the events that are unfolding right now. And with all of that that's happening, it's pretty easy to fall into a sense of complacency or maybe even a sense of panic or desperation and basically let ourselves be swept away by all this noise and these things that are happening. But we don't have to let ourselves get caught up in all of this panic, this desperation, all this complacency even. A man called Viktor Frankl wrote a book about his experience during the Nazi uh, concentration camps during World War II. And he said something that really hits home in a time like this. He says, everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. So this is the way that I'm choosing. These are seven things that I'm choosing to do right now while I'm locked down in quarantine and I hope you'll join me doing these things as well. So let's start with number one, which is to get with the current state of reality. Now this is to understand what is really happening right now. How is this affecting Amazon specifically? So I talked in detail about this in my last video here, but if you aren't yet up to date with the current reality on Amazon, basically everything is pretty screwy right now. Amazon has finally, for not finally, for the first time ever in history, they've actually hit their own limits. They're not able to fulfill or to even receive goods that aren't essential goods right now. So that means that particularly for new sellers now and probably over the next month, maybe even two months, is actually a really difficult time to start selling on Amazon. Now this is hugely variable. And again, I recommend you go check out that video where I talk about it in more detail, but it really depends on what type of product you're selling, where you're getting into these markets, that really depends whether your sales could be going through the roof right now, they could be pretty, pretty much staying stable, stable or going up a little bit, or they could be dropping off a cliff. It really depends. Um, and so that's the current state of affairs on Amazon is everything is just really volatile and really uncertain right now. Now, if you look past the next month or so, suddenly things don't look so bad. In fact, things look really, really good for Amazon and for e-commerce. What's happening right now is a tectonic, massive historical shift in terms of industries moving away from retail, which is gonna die and go the way of the dinosaurs, go the way of the dodo, and everything is gonna be moving all of that custom demand to buy goods, to buy products that we're selling. That's all gonna go into Amazon and go into other e-commerce platforms. So coming into the near future is gonna be a fantastic time to be selling online. But the reality right now, today, is that it's very hard to do product research, particularly if you're a new seller. It's very hard to launch products into this environment. Things like shipping, things like fulfillment aren't guaranteed at the moment. So now is the time to commit to things like learning and improving and upskilling so that when this short-term period ends, we can take advantage of the golden opportunity on the other side. Number two, and leading on from that point, focus on the things that you can control. So this obviously depends where you're at in this process. If you're a brand new Amazon seller, like I said, Product research is difficult right now. Launching is quite hard right now too, but there are a lot of things that you can do if you're already selling on Amazon that you have complete control over that you can do to get ahead of the pack right now. First thing, optimize your PPC campaigns. So we've personally seen across our categories, our competitors are just turning off their PPC. They're not even thinking about what's going on. They're just scared, they're panicking, remember they're desperate and they're switching off all their PPC. And so what we're actually doing is we're just optimizing our bids and optimizing our keywords that are functioning properly. And we're actually able to rank our products really easily right now because nobody else is competing for those keywords. So go into your PPC campaigns, look at the keywords that are performing. Those ones are the ones that you actually wanna bump up right now. Everything else that's not performing or that hasn't been proven as a, as a keyword that made sales, I would cut that off right now because it is higher risk. You could literally do this in like 20 minutes to maybe an hour at max. And while everyone else is just like off watching Netflix, you're gonna be ranking your products. So I would do that immediately. Another thing you can control is listing optimization. So you have control over your conversion rate through your listing. So that's your images, that's your copy in your title, your bullets. Make sure you've done your keyword research properly. Go back and, and see if you can improve anything. See if you can make that copy more compelling. Maybe you can add in enhanced brand content at this point in time. So go and look at that listing, work on it, improve it, and then you can lock in those benefits for the foreseeable future. The next thing you can do right now that you still have complete control over, even though Amazon is all screwy at the moment, is focus on brand building. Focus on building up your audience off of Amazon. Maybe now is the time to actually go through incorporation and decide an LLC or whatever the equivalent in your own country is. Whatever the case may be, the plans in the long term haven't changed. So think about the things that you need to do over the next three to six months and just start doing them now. Now is a really fantastic time to start building up that connection 
connection with your audience, particularly when everyone is at home, everyone already has their attention focused online. All you need to go out there and do is start building relationships with those customers. So to summarize this point, before you assume that things are just out of your control right now, think very critically about the specific things that you can do right now that will make a difference, not only right now, but also into the future, and just do those things. Point three, and this is a bit of a personal point for me, turn the news down. I could go on and on for a while about this point, but I'll try and keep it short. Just understand that the news, everything that you're gonna be seeing online in, in newspaper articles, blah, 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 on the TV, on YouTube even, is a 24 hour news cycle. It is designed to capture your attention and to keep you, keep you there thinking and worrying about all the stuff that they're telling you. They are in the business of keeping your attention and here's the thing, fear is the best way of keeping your attention. So everything that they put out on a daily basis, it's always gonna seem like it's worse. They're always gonna be looking for the negative side. For example, we know and we've known for a really long time that this disease follows an exponential curve, an exponential growth curve through the population. So that means that each day or each week, let's say, the amount of cases and the amount of infected and the amount of deaths are gonna go up by a certain percentage. Uh, we don't need to keep seeing those numbers every day because as long as that percentage stays the same, it's just gonna keep going up. And yet the news reports that like it's like this breaking news, like it was unexpected that it happened again today like it happened yesterday, it's gonna keep happening. So we don't need to just keep following the news and seeing it you know, minute by minute, seeing that count go up. It, it does nothing for us, for our psyche. It makes us feel that panic, that desperation, that sense of complacency as well. It makes us feel like we have no control. And at the end of the day, it's just not productive. And it's not just the health impacts, you'll see that with everything. You'll see that particularly in finance and the moves in the stock market at the moment. Oh, wow, yesterday was the biggest loss ever since 1929, since the Great Depression, which is kind of significant. But then the next day, it's the biggest gain ever since the 1929 Great Depression anyway. So it's like, there is literally no point to following all this stuff. If you try and make decisions and you are trying to keep control while you're listening to this stuff every day, every minute, every hour, you're just gonna make really bad decisions and you're gonna feel terrible while doing it. So try and just cut out the noise a little bit. It helps to keep updated with what, what things are happening because things are changing so rapidly, but you know, maybe once a day and probably more likely once every couple of days or honestly once a week is like enough time to understand what's going on and then just disconnect yourself from it again. Just remember the key thing to remember here is that they're trying to make you scared because fear is the best way of capturing your attention and they are in the business of capturing your attention. So it's very easy to get sucked into it and to think that everything that you're, you're learning about, you're hearing all these updates is meaningful, but as soon as you zoom out, as soon as you disconnect from it a little bit, you realize that most of it is just noise. It mostly just cancels itself out and it doesn't help you make better decisions. It doesn't help you do things to improve your own life. So that's number three, just turn the news down a bit, please for, for your own sake, but for my sake as well. So what are you gonna do once you've turned the news down, you're not spending so much time getting sucked into the media? I would suggest that the fourth thing that you do is to start reading, read books. And this is the opposite of getting sucked into the news because most things that you're gonna read books about have been around for a while. They're about things that aren't going to change tomorrow and then the next day after that and then flip around again and then after four days, you're just completely lost. The reason why it's so important to focus on information sources like books instead of like the media is because books are written about things that don't change. So you can go and read a book about economics. And yes, it has evolved a bit in the last, let's say 50 years. But in general, the book that you read tomorrow is not gonna go out of the date the day after tomorrow. It's still gonna be current knowledge. If you're wondering what you should read, well, it really depends what you wanna learn about. Honestly, right now, I think it's a really great time to learn about economics. It's a really great time to learn about the financial system and how it works and how it doesn't work. Since there is a recession coming and we are entering into uncertain times, I'd say it's very valuable for you to be learning about business and what are the things that go into business. You could read business books. You could read a lot of billionaires have really great books um, because you can see what real successful people do to get to where they've been. Uh, psychology, which is the marketing aspect of business is incredibly important. If there was a single book on psychology that I'd recommend, it would be Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. That one is an absolute must read to understand how our minds work and how they don't work too well. But in general, if you're looking for a book to read, just think about a topic that you don't know that much about that you wanna learn more about, maybe something that's happening these days, or again, the business side of things, and just go on Amazon and find a book that has good ratings and go read it. So in terms of what I'm learning right now, I wanna learn about the things that are actually underlying the foundations of what's happening right now. So the book that I'm reading right now is an economics book. Uh, the last book that I read was called Super Forecasting, which is actually talking about decision-making and your predictive abilities and how to improve them, which is a fantastic book, by the way, I recommend it. And before that, I read The Ostrich Paradox, which actually talks about human psychological biases and how they affect our inability ability or inability to prepare for natural disasters. Also very relevant in today's environment. I'll leave a list of those books down below as well as some, maybe some others that you can check out if you're looking for ideas. Uh, you could also check out some mindset-based books. So the quote that I mentioned, Viktor Frankl, Man's Search for Meaning. 
I think a lot of books like that, that talk about psychology and they talk about motivation and mindset, those are gonna be really useful for a lot of people right now. For myself, I'm okay, but if you're struggling with that side of things, again, the emotions, the, 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 the lack of certainty, or the just like fear of the future, definitely go find one of those books and read them. Um, also, maybe some fiction is actually good to just help you unwind and to relax and to take your mind off the stressful things that are happening right now. Whatever the case, definitely go read some books instead of watching the news. Number five, stay healthy and stay positive. And I mean that physically, I mean that emotionally, I mean that spiritually, whatever it is, you gotta keep busy, keep productive, keep active, keep in touch with your loved ones, maintain those emotional connections, those relationships that you have. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not the best at this, so I can't give too much advice, but it's times like these, times of crises where we need to basically maintain the routines that we have because those things, they're the things that actually keep us together. And as a bit of a personal share or an aside, I was actually struggling before this all started a little bit with my routines and just feeling a little bit disconnected from everything. And on the flip side, maybe ironically, being in this quarantine, being in this lockdown made me remember how important those things are. And so I'm actually feeling a lot happier. I'm feeling a lot more energetic, a lot more productive as well, and just better as a human being right now because of this sort of crisis that's happened. And it's really gotten me back into my healthy routines and, and taking care of myself first. So I cut out alcohol. I'm actually on a strict diet at the moment. I'm working out every day, either running up and down the stairs or using rings or bands. I'm being pretty strict with my meditation schedule and gratitude and just those things that I do daily to sort of perk me up. And probably one of the biggest things for me personally is that I'm being productive. I'm not feeling useless. I, I have things to do and I'm doing them and it really makes the time pass quite pleasantly and very quickly as well. All of that aside, I mean, I can only imagine what this year is gonna be like in terms of mental health, depression, um, and issues like that just throughout the whole world. And it's really kind of mind boggling to think about how many people have been thrust into, into crisis by this. So ultimately for this point, stay healthy, stay positive. It, it's really important that we all support each other in these times. So if you need you know, to get somebody who can help you with things like that, then, then do so. But Focus on yourself first, those healthy habits, and it'll make everything else much easier. So the sixth thing that we can all do right now during quarantine is consume less and create more. Now that sounds abstract, and I'm not talking about minimalism or you know throwing all your stuff away. This is more of a guiding principle to follow if you're looking at ways to basically add value to yourself, to add value to your net worth in the end, to be able to start valuable businesses, and basically to build a skill set that is worth more to the world. There's a saying that goes, the more you give, the more you get. Now, I kind of agree with that, but I would actually twist that to make it a little bit more specific. And I would say, the more you create, the more you get. And here's why. In rough terms, this is how the economy works. This is how the job market works. Basically, if there are two entities, one is creating something, one is consuming something. Normally, who gets paid there? The person who's consuming or the person who's creating? It's gonna be the person who's creating. For example, with me, for example, with YouTube, I could either spend my time watching YouTube videos and consuming that content, or I could spend my time creating YouTube videos and I'm gonna get paid for that through the ad revenue. But not only am I getting paid, here are the other things that are the real benefits. Firstly, I'm hopefully adding value to my audience and that builds up goodwill, that builds up capital, things which are valuable and have economic value. They have a dollar value associated with them. And then lastly as well, I'm actually building up my abilities. I'm building up my skill set so that even if creating this particular YouTube video doesn't get me something right now, what I'm doing is I'm improving my own value. I'm becoming better at certain things which do have an economic value. So if I don't get paid now, I'm gonna get paid later. And YouTube is just one specific example, but you can apply this consume or create dichotomy to almost anything. So instead of going on Amazon to buy products, why don't you think about what product ideas can you see around the house or what product ideas could be useful in this changing economy and changing environment? Go and think about these product ideas, create them rather than just consuming products. Think about business ideas, create a business idea rather than just consuming the products that other businesses are providing to you. So you wanna make more money, which means you need to be worth more money or have skills and abilities that are worth money. That means you need to create more and consume less. So the first step is to do a stock take of what you're currently doing with your quarantine life at the moment. Where are you consuming stuff unnecessarily? So look at social media. For example, Instagram. Instagram is pretty much an addictive piece of crap that creates really bad habits and then short circuits your neurochemical reward system. It doesn't do much good for you if you're using it as a consumer, which is how most people use it. So look at the time you're spending on things like that, on things like YouTube, consuming again, spending that time, spending that attention, and then think about how you could apply that towards creating something instead. And it doesn't necessarily have to be something of economic value. It doesn't have to be starting a business idea. But for example, think about, like I said with before, instead of watching YouTube, creating a YouTube video, how about instead of listening to music, taking up a new instrument, starting to play an instrument. There are so many useful skills that you can do that involve creation, that all you need is a computer and an internet connection. 
Well, how about learning to code? That is by definition creating something. How about learning to create websites using WordPress? How about learning to write is also a really valuable skill. You don't even need to use your computer. You could pick a skill that involves your hands and involves actually building something. No matter what the specific example is, the idea and the principle is to stop consuming and instead start creating. And you'll find in all of those examples and all of the other ones you can think of, there are people making thousands of dollars, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars by creating those same things just because they stopped consuming that thing and instead they started creating it. So I wanna clarify one thing here. What about books and education? Because I just told you to start reading books, but isn't that consuming? You're not creating anything when doing that. And that's a good point. Here's the litmus test that I would use and this is what I do personally to try and prevent myself from consuming too much without actually creating. At the very least, for every single book that I read, I now write a complete summary. I write down all of the main ideas that I, all of the things that I liked about the book, everything that I learned from it, and then a lot of the principles and stuff that I can take out of that book and apply it somewhere else. And by taking that information out of the book when you consume it and actually creating something with that, you've again gone from consumption to creation. And by the way, this isn't just limited to like informational books, like business books or whatever. You can absolutely learn things and then record those lessons as well and record your thoughts and reflections from fiction books or from whatever type of book. And just to hit this home with an example, if you're still not convinced that the simple act of creating a book summary from a book has actual economic value, try this. Go to Google, type in book summary, and then type in the name of one of these books and go and have a look at some of those top results. And what you're gonna find are businesses, websites that are businesses, and their only product is they take a book, they read it, they create a summary out of it, and then they sell that summary. And some of these businesses are million dollar businesses. So yes, there is value in something as simple as literally writing a summary of a book. So that was point six. And the seventh thing that you can do right now during quarantine is audit your finances. Because honestly, guys, a recession is coming. If it's not already here, it could be one of the worst recessions we've seen in a really long time. And now is the time to start cutting back on unnecessary spending. So you can go and start looking at your bank statements, start looking at credit cards, start seeing what bills are coming in and just evaluate every time you pay some money, make sure that you actually need to be paying that money. So you wanna stick right now to basic essentials, the, the basics that you need to live. And then other than spending on essentials, you really wanna cut back to the things that are gonna add value to you. So these are some of the things that we've talked about in this video. These are investments in things that are, if not gonna make you money directly, then you're, they're gonna focus on the most important asset you have, which is yourself, which is your mind, which is your skill set and your ability to do value adding work or creating like we just talked about. This is gonna go hand in hand with cutting down on your consumption because you're gonna find that you're spending a lot of money on things that you don't need to be consuming. So when you go through your spending and you're cutting stuff, be reasonable, but be critical because the overall objective here is to have cash. Cash is king during times like these. Cash is freedom, cash means options. And here's the most important thing, as a business owner or an entrepreneur, what you wanna do is combine your cash with your ability and the skills that you've just gained through reading these books and through learning how to create instead of consuming. Once you combine the cash that you have available with that skill set, that's when you become a powerhouse. And that is when you can turn these times of crises and uncertainty and fear and doubt when everybody else is feeling bad and they're just running for cover, you're the one diving in and taking the opportunities that are available. Because we are entering into a really scary time, we're also entering into a time of great opportunity. So that was number seven, audit your finances. And I wanted to leave you with just one more. So let's go with number eight, create an action plan. So I've told you so many things that you could do right now, but the fact is that if you just turn this video off and then go on and continue and watch the next video on autoplay, nothing much is gonna happen. You're not actually gonna change anything. So what I want you to do is just write down some of these actions that, that stood out to you during this video. Maybe you thought about some other things that you've been wanting to do as well, but you haven't committed to them. So I don't know what they might be, whether it's to pick one hobby where you can start creating something instead of start consuming, whether it's those actions we talked about with your Amazon Seller Central account, whether it's your PPC optimization, or to go and redo and improve your listing. It could be to audit your finances, like we just said, to go and look at your bank statements, whatever they are, Think about the change that you'll get by doing them. Think about where that will take you in three months time from now, six months time from now. Just some simple actions that you do today can have a really meaningful impact down the line. So think about the difference between where you are today and where you wanna be in the future. Think about the specific action steps you need to take that are small and easy along the way to get there and then just start doing them. And I wanna hear about your actions actually. So let me know down below in the comments, what are you gonna do as a result of this video? What have you been thinking about doing that you're now going to do? And now it's your turn. By the way, if you're still here watching this, I bet you got value out of this video. So do me a favor and smash the like button. That'll show me that you did enjoy this video, that you do appreciate it. And it shows me that these are worth making and worth putting out there. It also helps get the word out a bit. Make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already done so with that notification bell turned on so you get the next video as it comes out. 
And before we go, I wanted to leave you with the last part of that quote from Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. It really is a fantastic book and I think it really puts times like these in perspective. So here's a final piece from Man's Search for Meaning. And there were always choices to make. Every day, every hour offered the opportunity to make a decision. A decision which determined whether you would or would not submit to those powers which threatened to rob you of your very self, your inner freedom, which determined whether or not you would become the plaything of circumstance, renouncing freedom and dignity to become molded into the form of the typical inmate. So me personally, I'm choosing freedom, I'm choosing dignity, I'm gonna to choose to fight for those things and not let anything rob me of my inner self or my inner freedom. So I hope you do the same as well and I will see you in the next video.